learn. And when I see that the process is working, then I'm like, oh my God, okay. So I'm not bad at this, you know? This is when I am sure I'm not bad uh, at my work. So it's, a, it's, a, it's emotionally, it's also another issue. But that's gonna be a story for later. Okay, let's talk about grouping information, shall we? Yes. About this. Let me show you a very specific list, okay? Do you remember why we need why we need to to learn how to group information? To be positive and happy. To be positive and happy, that's one consequence <laughs> of this, you know, but that's not the reason. <laughs> what else? Uh, we're having a best understanding of the topic that you are reading, that you are listening. A better understanding that, okay, yes, that one was, uh, that one was useful. To have a better understanding of things that you're reading, you're listening, you're writing. You know, in the case of production activities, it helps you correct yourself. And in case of passive activities, like listening and, and, and reading, it helps you understand better. This, this type of, of divisions make you understand English as English is. We get English construction, stopping the, the translation. Okay? This is going to be a challenge if you continue translating in your mind. But I'm going to try to make it easy. I'm going to try to make it easy. Though it is a little bit hard. Let me show you the following examples, okay? We have seen in previous classes conjunctions. And these conjunctions are connectors. Let's imagine that you have idea number one. Then you have a connector. And then you have idea number two. Right? This is second idea. It's going to be oops. these two ideas are going to be connected or interconnected using a conjunction. Yes. Okay. Technically, this is the, the function of it, okay? The way this, this, uh, this word works is idea number one, person verb complement, and idea two. And with this, with this in mind, we can talk about two different lists that we should dominate by now. And I think it's going to be easy for you. I think this is no, no issue for you. We have the fanboys conjunctions. We have the paired conjunctions. Fanboys conjunctions, connectors that are gone or are created from an acronym, right? This is actually an acronym. Fanbox. Do you remember anything about this? In the case, only Chucho saw this. Uh, from. Excellent. From. The A for. And. And. The B. No, the N. And uh, nor. Nor, correct. B. B is for. Oh, what is B? Bye. No, that we... Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yes. Bye. What are you talking about? Bye is. Uh... 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, why is a preposition? Exactly. No. <laughs> no. There's no connection here. In this case, now that we are that we knew what is a conjunction, okay. Luis, tell us what is it. Mm, but. But exactly, you got it. But in the same area of connectors, we have the O or, or the Y. Yet. No. Yet. Very good. Uh -huh. And the S. So? No. Ah, yes. Yes, of course. You are totally Yay. correct. As long as you don't confuse prepositions with connectors, we are working well. If you still have questions between projections and propositions, tell me, because that's going to be fundamental for the next classes. What is the difference between a conjunction and a preposition? Means once. Again. <laughs> Hey, Luis, no. <laughs> okay. Conjunction versus preposition. Oh, because a conjunction joins two ideas. A conjunction joins two ideas. Then what is a preposition? Yeah? Uh, only connects nouns. Very good. Okay, so you found the idea. Excellent, brother. Uh -huh. The word. Uh, what word did you say in the B? By. When you say by. You connect nouns. Yes, exactly. Uh, no, the, my cell phone is by the computer, next to the computer. It is the same. Yes, and I remember the adjectives plus preposition. And I... Right. Yes. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally right. That's why it's a little bit... It's a little bit easy to confuse because they are very simple words. They are monosyllabical. No. They have very similar characteristics, but really, really, the function of it is the biggest difference between yes. these two. Okay. So, in this the same way, we can talk about examples, no? The teachers were frustrated for the school. From ah no sorry from is a preposition the the the, 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 the conjunction is four not from the F was wrong no oh, oh, yes yes the F was wrong F F okay. literally, literally. <laughs> funny eh comedian so we have this one. The teacher was frustrated for the school had cut funding for all the reaching programs. Do you understand this? This example? Mm. Yes. Yeah, super sure. The teacher was frustrated. For the school had cut funding for all enrichment programs. There's a little note. No? This is considered very formal. Too formal that it is actually rarely used as a conjunction yeah, in modern English. Because what I don't remember your isn't you <laughs> for exactly mm -hmm. it's always because or i don't know the because. only way you are going to use a for is if you are talking as a gentleman in a very in a very posh wedding or a very 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 different ways the only way you're going to see the word for is in novels of Sherlock Holmes, for example, or there is a movie in Netflix 
Um, gentlemen, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Let me show you. This one. Ah, no, it's not in Netflix anymore. The Gentleman. Watch this movie. It's an actual movie. It's very interesting, very funny. But the, 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 the way they speak, the dialogue, Jesus Christ, is so formal. All the movie. All the movie they're talking really, really, really formal. And it's so interesting because the other... The, there is a contrast with the street gang that uh, makes uh, marijuana in the year, in, in a garage. So the, you have the contrast of very, very educated persons and very, very uneducated persons. And the, 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 the language is so, so massively different. You should definitely watch this movie in English with English subtitles. So, so interesting. So, for is not common in modern English. Okay? Next, the word and is easy to understand. Right? And there is a note as well. When the conjunctions and and or connect three or more words or phrases, you need a, a comma. In this course, I will write a literature review, a case study, and a final paper. There is a close, very close relation with conjunctions and commas. Very, very, very close that we need to consider. Okay? Conjunctions are, and commas are very constantly together, and we are going to see the rules in a moment. Okay? That's going to be for later. Nor. The students did not complete their homework. Nor did they pass the test. Third note. Using nor, we should do an inversion. As we saw on negative adverbs, do you remember that when we were when we were watching uh, expressions like neither nor either or? Do you remember that? That there was a yes. list that was inverted with the auxiliary. Ah, uh, yes. Well, it happens with nor too. Read the example. Tell me, Chuchu. Did I? Uh, ah, okay. For example, nor did you do your homework? Well, I was, okay, I was asking you to read, but okay, continue your example. Ah, sorry. Yeah, we are only reading. We are only analyzing. We are not creating. So I read what? The example we got. Ah, the students did not complete their homework, nor did they pass the test. Okay. Right. <laughs> yes, sorry. That, that was better. <laughs> that was better. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yes, a lot. So this nor did. Nor did is the issue here. Right? Next. But. The study is several years old, but still available to the study. In this case, there's no big difference. And I think this is the easiest of all. Don't you think? Uh, yes. 
this example is the easiest of all. There's no difficulty in this. There's only the connector but. The same thing with the word or. There's really no massive difference we can say about the word or. At the end of the class, the students can choose to write an essay or take a test, right? Yet, this is one of the most strange ones if you are thinking in Spanish, because to be honest, it's very common in English. Eh? The patient complained of chronic pain, yet she refused treatment. Very similar to but, but you are describing something that is surprising. The difference between but and yet is that these two yet is surprising. Okay, do you understand this? Yes. Good. And the last one, the last one is so, and really there is no, again, no difference between what we know and this information. I have only been a nurse for one year, so I have a little experience with paper chart. The, the last example, can, can we understand yet as a as, as similar to what? Exactly, that, that was a good example. The, they are similar, but the word but doesn't imply a... The word, the word but doesn't imply a surprise. You know what I mean? Okay, so can we say that yet <clears throat> it is similar to, to both, but with an additional uh, emotional connotation? Harsh connotation. Aha, exactly. There is always a, a different connotation with nor with uh, yet because we are talking about a. How can I tell you this? Yeah, we're talking about a surprise. And it's very important that it is, a, it is a surprise. You need to mentalize that it has to be a surprise. Okay. 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 I have a lot additional doubt sure. with Jet. Um, I remember when I was younger in, a, in a, an other English classes or another English course uh, that the teacher mentioned mentioned that when yet is used with, a, with past perfect or present perfect, for example, it is always collocated at the end of the sentence for mentioning that, that an activity has not been completed. For example, okay. yes. I have not finished my work. I have not finished my pendings yet. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. And that in that case, that... Yeah. And, no, sorry. No. You are you are correct, but you are con you are not considering the type of yet that you are working with. Uh, okay. okay. The word yet, as a time expression, and actually all time expressions are in the family of adverbs. Okay. Adverbs, according to the definition. Modify and describe a verb. They give you. Uh, let me check. If you are describing a verb, you can talk about the way, comma, the place, the where, or the time, the when. And the expression yet gives you time. So the yet that you are mentioning is an adverb. It's a purple word, not a yellow one. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's a different family. It's a different family. Uh -huh. But it's the same word. <laughs> it's the same word, though. Uh -huh. Exactly. But why, if it is an adverb, need to be located at the end? Actually, the most of the times, adverbs go at the end. Adverbs of time and place go at the end. So if because I tell you, English. <laughs> uh, not really, it's, used to, 
In Hispanic State, we do that too. For example, where, where did you go last night? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yes, you know. You know, say, eh, uh, see, in the inverse sense, it sounds weird in the Spanish. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, exactly. Really, the Spanish sounds strange. That's why all the, when I teach to, when I, when I teach the position of words to elementary students, they, they collocate the always, for example, the word the expression always goes at the end. But then when they become intermediate, I tell them the position of always goes in a different position. I have always wanted to. The word just also changes, but expressions like tomorrow, yesterday, in the night, uh, at seven o'clock, uh, you know, times and places, they always, in the most cases, go to the end. Yet is one case. And he mentioned in that time that yet in this case, uh, does it have translation for Spanish? It does. Yes, it does, but who needs that? <laughs> ah, yes. yes. For example, I have not finished my pending yet. No he terminado mis pendientes. Aún. Aún. So yes, it has. It has. Yes, because it is not the same. I have not no he terminado mis pendientes y es nada así de no he terminado mis pendientes aún. Well, kind of, it can be implicit, no? Uh, because the, the, the verb, the verb is the, the, the one that is giving you the context. If you say, I have not finished, you understand the yet automatically. I, I think that yet is like todavía. Uh -huh. that's ah, yes, that's todavía, yes. Todavía no he terminado. Uh -huh. exactly. Yes, I, I think todavía is more common, of more com common using that, aún. In Spanish. For Spanish speakers. You have to leave you. the show? Yes. That's huh? so sad. I can't show. <laughs> that's not my fault. I have yeah. class at 9 a.m. Don't worry, brother. We can we can see the rest of the of the conjunctions with you on Monday. So, have a good day, brother. See you. Have a nice weekend. You too, man. You too. You have a nice. <laughs> <This is> banana. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. What a different thing. Again, all that information that we are using in this moment is useless. You know. Do you know what is useless? Yes, the opposite of useful. Exactly. All this information is completely useless because we're talking about analysis from, from English to Spanish and in Spanish it's easy to, to make this analysis, you know? The problem is that when we are trying to produce the language, we cannot really make an inverse analysis because we don't have this information, right? So all that information, it will not help you if we are considering the Spanish form of words, especially when we're talking about, for example, uh, yet, uh, no, 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 uh, nor, inversion, right? The students did not complete their homework, nor did they pass the test. That sentence doesn't make sense in Spanish. So we need to adapt ourselves to the rules in English. Yes, more different in our, in our case. Very. There's no point on, 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 the, on the other side. Right? Yes, there are touch points within the language, for example, with yet, no? That you can translate as todavía or aún, no? 
Uh -huh. Where like, well, there are other structures, for example, NOR, which can, you cannot make a copy of the yes. structure. No? <laughs> to Spanish. That's why the importance of phrases in classes. If you group information the way English is built, you will understand from English to English and you will start thinking in English. If you continue trying to translate this to Spanish, all the phrases and clauses will disappear. Like in this example, this is a perfect example. The did here, nor did they pass the test. Inversion is the old examples too. All the examples that we saw when we are using the third conditional and and uh, this inverted this section. If we had arrived sooner, we wouldn't have missed the beginning. Had we arrived sooner, we wouldn't have missed the beginning. This had we doesn't make sense in Spanish as well. So all this information is to think in English. That's the, the priority, thinking in English. Questions? Um, no, I must have teacher think. Then if we are talking about conjunctions and we are having this, or we need to associate previous topics, do you remember what are per conjunctions? Remember, you need to connect. These are words that connect two ideas together. What kind of words are connectors of two ideas that have a pair? I think I know not understand the question correctly, so. Uh, for example, neither or. No. You got it. Ah, exactly. Yeah. Ah. And we have for neither or, neither nor, because neither is negative. Ah, yes, neither or. Nor. Either or. Either or, exactly. Uh -huh. Then there's the second one, the third pair. Mm -hmm. There are just four. You can do this. I'm going to give you a clue. The next one is with the connector and. Ah, uh, yes, I remember you started teaching these classes. You didn't see all this. Either or. Either or. Not only, but also. That's the next one. Mm -hmm. And the last one. Well, where's the next one? I forgot one. Both and. Let me help you with that information. Those words. <laughs> really? But the, the last two, I don't know. Well, we need 
need to study because they are very common as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think I need to 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 read my notes. <laughs> yes, totally, totally, man. <laughs> That's another example. Both the students and the teachers were satisfied through the pilot program. With a little note, number two is not only but also. And there's another example over here. But why is it making a uh, number? Later, later I'll check this. Then either or, have this two. And either or, we have these two. Paired conjunctions. Teacher, uh, yes. One question about the, the fan voice examples. Uh -huh. uh, in the first one, uh, about the uh, using for conjunction, you yes. mentioned that for is rarely used now in the, for native, native speakers, right? Uh, which ones? Uh, for. For. Yes. It is not that it's native, it's that it's just not common. Ah, it, it, it became it became very very formal. So okay. people don't really use it. And in the example that you gave, uh, the teacher were frustrated for for the school had got funding for all enrichment programs. Uh -huh. So in this case, for is similar to or or for as conjunction is similar to because of because of the ah yes totally 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 it is because it's similar to because of it's not the other it's not for not not uh here for it doesn't have the meaning for it's similar to i don't know this is for me for example for me check this out if you say this is for me, what family does the word for correspond to? Because of the position and the, the relation to words, what family does it belong to? A uh, preposition. Exactly. The word me is a noun or a pronoun, and that's the only thing it's connecting. That's a preposition. Uh, and for as conjunction is similar to because of? Connecting ideas. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's why it's so, so, so important to establish that. The difference, you know? Okay, yes. Yes, completely. Very, very good. Thank you. Well, all that information is very important because now we are going to make a difference between the two yellows, okay? Let me help you with two extra colors. If we go through, let me check this. I'm going to copy this and check this. Let's check the construction of, for example, the word, which one can it be? Let's take this example. The project will require significant investment of both time and money. Uh, so in which example do I? I Ah, yes, this one. <laughs> the prayer will require significant investments of both time and money. 
according to the to the explanation, idea uh, conjunction is connecting two ideas. No. So what two ideas are we connecting here? Which are the two ideas that we connecting here? Can you do the analysis? The project will require significant investment of time. Mm -hmm. Of time. Of time. Wrong. Eliminate of. Almost there. Idea number one the project will require significant investment. Person by common. Remember that an idea is person by common. The rest is not an idea because it's not a person of government of time and money is not an idea. This is a phrase. More, more specifically, a proposal phrase. Why? Because we have the preposition of. In previous classes, we saw that portions of information or groups of words are phrases. Remember? Yes, I remember. Right? And we saw it with colors and we divide them with colors. No? Yes. Well, I'm going to show you how this rule is validated, okay? Because a conjunction in the previous examples, they connect words of the same family. Actually, let's do a little change. Let's do a little, a little modification. Word or phrase, word or phrase. Of the same family. This is going to be the modification we are going to do. The conjunction connects a word or phrase, no, two words or phrases of the same family and characteristics. If you do an analysis, here's over here. The teachers were frustrated for the school, right? In this case, it's in because of, and the school is an out. In this course, I will write a literature review, comma, a case study, and a final paper. Literature, literature review is an out, case study is an out, final paper is an out. We use a paragraph. Okay? Uh, Look at this, the study is several years old, but still available. Years old is a description, and still available is a description as well. So, but then conjunction are only, not only young ideas, also young phrases? Aha, correct. Especially I, when they are from the same family. Exactly. It's total parallelism here. And here in in the in the case of words, uh, words every word but uh, excluding now, right? But because in that case the propositions are uh, that way. All words including nouns. No, they can also join nouns. Like, look at the word and in this case. A literal review, a case study, and a final paper. But 
Well, in that case, and is becomes a proposition instead of a conjunction? No, 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 no. Because you are joining them by context. A proposition, another characteristic of a proposition, and another difference, if you are between preposition and conjunction, is that preposition gives you location and movement. For example, where is your cell phone? Your cell phone is on the table. That's location. And when my cell phone vibrates, it moves towards me, towards his movement. Ah, uh, okay. It's not enough to say that prepositions join and nouns. Nouns, exactly. That's not enough. All that information, I think, I hope I gave it to you. Prepositions, connector of nouns, expression, position, and movement, except. <laughs> Uh, yes. No. yes, yes, no. Okay, yeah, and in this in this last in this last example, uh, this information is out, awesome. Exactly. Uh, in the in the end, no, in the in the end, end, yes. The function of end is a different thing. Yes, it's connecting nouns noun phrases in this case but there is no movement no no, no uh, position implied position. that's out of the question uh, so different that if you say okay, under yeah. over no it's yeah good. completely agree. and the standard connector the standard preposition for by excellence is the connector of Ah, yes, of this always used. Mm -hmm. There's no other more perfect preposition than the connector of because it always will connect to us. I will add this to the to the word family as well. Preposition by excellence is It will always like an out the class of English, a bowl of cereal, the a group of children. You know, it's always always connecting us. Well, all this is the introduction to the following part, because meanwhile this idea, well this idea, doesn't uh, connect. This conjunction doesn't connect ideas. We can also talk about an idea number one with an idea number two. What is an idea? What are the three components of an idea? Do you remember? Subject, uh, verb, complement. Exactly. Subject, verb, and complement. And this happens This happens in the following example Look at this If we go through 4 Now, let's use something more common. Nor. The students did not complete their homework, nor they pass the test. In this case, I do the same question. Which are the two phrases? No, the two ideas that we are connecting here. Do you know? 
They pass a test. They pass the test. Close. The first one. The students didn't complete their homework. That makes more sense. The second one. The students passed the test. No, they passed the test. test. No, that's that what I say. I say previously. <laughs> Did they pass the test? No, they passed the test. Did they pass the test? No, they. Ah, uh -huh. did they pass the test? Ah, there are No. They didn't. They didn't, sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yes, they, they, they didn't complete that homework, and additionally, they didn't pass the test. They didn't pass the test. Uh -huh. Ooh, That's what we are saying. Exactly. Yeah. Look at how the word and additionally, this is considered too much information. It's better to use more. It's faster, it's quicker, it has better better reception. This helps you understand that the parallelism. Now that now that I am analyzing uh, how nor is being used here, mm -hmm. I think in the Spanish we have a similar word. I think I think that well maybe I, I'm not understanding correctly. Uh, ni okay, uh -huh. ni esto ni el otro. Uh -huh. ah. Excellent. It exists in Spanish. Yes. yes, and I think we usually uh, uh, give it the, the same use uh, for saving language. For what? For saving words. For saving, ah, yes, ah, in Spanish, no? We, uh -huh. we, yes, yes, we, because we, we don't say, no, 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 ah, and, ah, and the same instruction, no. Yes, ni esto ni that. Ajá. Usually, here are a first large, large sentence, and when we use ni, uh, we abbreviate the second one. Well, now you need to use that same logic with parallel conjunctions. Okay. The same logic. That you should you shouldn't change it. As long as you 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 transfer the logic to English, this is when you are start thinking English. This is when you start thinking English. Right? So yes. it's exactly the same. Just with different words, but that's when you are gonna start feeling the difference of really talking in a different language. You see? All of that was the introduction only. <laughs> what do you think about this? Like literally we, we, we connected together all the topics that we have seen. We connected parallelism, uh, conjunctions, uh, pair conjunctions, Word families. Um, the other one was uh, parallelism. Ah, phrases. Ah, phrases. All the types of phrases, you know. And we are using all the information that we have seen during the course together now. So. You should definitely review your, your notes during this weekend because on, on the next classes we are going to use all that information to do analysis. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, I will be doing this weekend. <laughs> Perfect. All of that is useful because now I'm going to show you, or on Monday, 
I'm going to show you another use of conjunctions. This is going to be called a dependent section. versus an independent section. That again is a person verb complement. I usually collocate the person verb the dependent section in color pink and the independent person or section in let's use the color let's use color blue as always. The pink is going to depend on the blue one. That is going to be seen in, for example, a conditional. Look at this. Eh? The author must avoid bias if she wants to maintain a scholarly tone. What is bias? Facebook. Oh, okay, so you know what is bias. Okay, perfect. The author must avoid bias if she wants to maintain a scholarly tone. Right? What happens? If we divide this in two, the dependent part or the independent idea is the author must avoid bias. You can understand this sentence without any more context, right? Yeah, because the scholarly told my maintaining it is subordinate to this first part correct that is independent second it depends that the authors exclude bias from, the, from this discourse but why why the second one is dependent Because, because if the author uh, doesn't exclude, uh, no, uh, it, it it depends on the of the the author exclusion of bias. No? The author exclusion of bias, no. We are talking about something structurally. We are talking about structures in this case. But structurally, why is the second dependent? Not in context. The context doesn't get affected. We're talking about the construction of the sentence. Because we are using if. Because we are using if. If is what we call and no, because if we omit uh, if from this uh, second sentence, both have I think we both have the same. can be understood completely. Exactly, they can be independent. She wants to maintain a scholarly tone. Um, yes, but that's what he, that's what she wants. <laughs> right. Totally. But when you are in it, it's completely different. <laughs> completely different, brother. Now you're, you're getting the idea. Your condition. That's uh, the function of a conditional one. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So when we say this, 
we are precisely using subordination together and the, the idea of this information is to know how to divide how to make a division on all that because you can clearly see one portion of information versus another portion of information you know it becomes subordinate versus dependent we can say actually that it is the opposite uh, let's call it this because it should be the other way around the independent class section is here and the independent section is here remember this topic I see you having an idea of this topic yes yeah, yes not maybe not precisely with the correct terms but the but the, the how it works yes <laughs> don't worry I'm not using correct terms either I'm trying to eliminate correct terms I don't want grammar yes not I think that one of my main issues. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Being, uh, grammar term, but when I see some, when I, yes, when I see something that is not in the correct order or something like this, I say, mm, I don't know. It doesn't match. Uh, it doesn't match. It seems weird. Uh, there's something strange here. <laughs> That's right, brother. That is totally right. Don't worry about that. We are not going to use grammar. The idea is that you know how to identify sections because we are going to do it when we speak and we are going to do it when we understand texts. I, I think one of my issues is that uh, due to my, my job or my mm -hmm. profession, I don't know how to say, mm -hmm. I need to, to read a lot of books in English. Mm -hmm. I don't have uh, directly uh, books in Spanish, at least in the technical part. So I'm constantly facing structures, new words, or, but uh, I, I, when I see something, I, I know ah that is that is correct or that sounds good, or, or the opposite. It doesn't seem uh, good or it, this is not correct. But I don't know why, right? <laughs> exactly. It's important to know the why. Exactly. Uh -huh. Or even I copy that structure, the those structures, and I try to use uh, to use them in my daily speaking. But if someone asks me, ah, that sounds good. Why are you using that? Or, uh, it's, it's like uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So first, because we are not learning to teach. You, should, you, you, you are not learning to teach the English, you need to learn it, to process it, to, to understand mistakes only, and that's it. Yeah, you know, I always just, copying. <laughs> exactly, that's, that's a good thing. And, and I, I always tell my students that, learning English is copy-paste, literally you don't need anything else. Nothing else is necessary, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's literally a copy-paste situation, and that's it. So yes, brother. Welcome to Real English. Yes. Don't worry, we're gonna do the, the analysis on the next classes. You can right now go to to your tasks, to your daily activities, and I'll see you on Monday. I should just one final administrative question. Yes. Uh, what's up? I think you, you mentioned this is the last the last course for the advanced students. Yeah. So I only. Uh, I would like to know when when is estimated this course finishes approximately. 
This uh, actually this month, well, we have not seen all the, uh, the topics that I wanted to see. I'm just giving you the most important information. Uh, so I wanted to cover it for this month, and that's it. If we don't finish that, it's gonna be one month more. But but it depends on your attendance, you know. Okay, but uh, in general terms, we can say is uh, a long May. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. A long May. Okay, perfect. Okay. okay. That's gonna be the the mission, brother. Perfect. So, thank you, teacher. You too, man. Have a very good weekend. Enjoy and rest as much as you can. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and good luck with your class, man. Bye-bye. Next one, You too.